Hello and welcome to this very special interaction with Dr. Daniel Jurgen, uh, Vice Chairman of IHS Market, as they uh, get ready for a second year of Sera Week, the India Energy Forum in Delhi over this weekend and the next week as well. Dr. Jurgen, hi. Congratulations, first of all, for the second year of Sera Week. And a lot has changed in the last one year the prices, the global queues, industry dynamics, etc. How would you put all of that in perspective? I think that uh, what we've seen is the changes in the oil market, which are quite dramatic. A year ago, it was still looking at uh, oversupply and low prices, and today we have a very tight oil market. And of course, on top of that is the question of uh, sanctions. And so I think for uh, this Sierra Week in India, it could not be more timely in terms of uh, what we're going to address, because it's so important to what's happening to the Indian economy right now. Hmm. When it comes to India, as you mentioned, even the prices have been higher. We've seen the currency continue to slide 17 percent down for the Indian rupee in this year. And that has made the imports really expensive for the Indian markets. As a consumer country, where do you think India stands right now and what should really we be doing? I think India is in a in a difficult position on uh, oil now because it imports uh, 85 percent of its oil. And of course, with the slide in the rupee, as you point out, uh, this is really driving up the cost. And uh, this is energy is a very important factor in India's uh, economic growth. So um, it's, be, you know, this is a really hot issue, a really serious and important issue. And we're going to have the key players, including the Saudi oil minister and the secretary general of OPEC, at our conference, so I think it could not be more timely, and, and every word that's spoken there will be significant for India. Oh, well, absolutely. And especially with the crude oil prices at a four year highs, what is your sense? Iran exports continue to decline. We saw 1.6 million barrels in September. That's come down to 1.1 million in the previous week. And, uh, you know, markets are anticipating that we could see some more crude being knocked off from Iran. What has been your sense about the Iran sanctions, the latest statement from U.S. about waivers, extension, etc.? I think that um, this administration is uh, determined to uh, push down Iranian exports and wants to do it faster and greater volumes than under the Obama administration. And so uh, I think the expectation should be that uh, Iranian exports will be lower than they were last time there were sanctions there. And so that's coming at a time, it's just a few weeks away. And I think that nervousness, anticipation, uncertainty is very much on the oil price. In some ways, it seems to me, when I, we look at the numbers, that in physical terms, the oil market is balanced. But right now, it's emotionally unbalanced uh, with the uh, imminence of these sanctions, combined with the continuing decline in production in Venezuela and uncertainty about other parts of the world. So it's a dramatic turnaround from where the oil market was even half a year ago. Hmm. And the kind of statements that we have seen coming from Saudi Arabia and Russia talk about increasing production and assuring that they will be able to fill in the gap. Do you actually see that happening on the quality and the quantity front? I think they're going to do their best. I was just uh, came back from Moscow. I was there with both the Saudi and the Russian ministers. And I think they're both very concerned uh, for stability in the oil market, not seeing these prices continue to go up. They're quite uh, aware of the impact of uh, high oil prices with weakening currencies on countries like India, and they don't see that in, as good for the world economy, good for them, uh, as well as not good for countries like India. And so their message is that the supplies, they'll do their best, get the supplies there. What they do say, say is they need to see the demand. But what's, of course, happening now is supply chains are being being changed uh, in anticipation of sanctions. For instance, South Korea completely stopped in August buying Iranian oil, which meant that it had to go to else place, elsewhere for oil. So we're in a very uh, uh, jangly period right now. What would you say works best for India? Because I remember having the same conversation last year as well, that India's dependence only continues to grow from here. The crude oil volatility is something that we will perhaps have to learn to live with. So what you would you say, uh, the kind of progress that India perhaps is making? Are we in the right direction? And is the pace fast enough? 
Under Prime Minister Modi and uh, the Honorable Energy Minister Dharmendra Pradhan, we've seen an effort to change the investment environment uh, in India. For decades, uh, India had a, a, a situation that did not encourage investment, so it was losing out to other countries around the world that were bringing new supplies on. I think India needs to uh, continue to make progress in attracting both domestic Indian investment and international investment and technology to develop its resources to reduce its dependence. At the same time, it needs to be more efficient in how it uses uh, its, its oil uh, and its energy. So I think it's, you know, you've got to move on, on both of those fronts. Oh, well, absolutely. But well, Dr. Yogin also... And, uh, and I, sh I should say, by the way, that we can see the degree of... Uh, wait, can, can, can I just add? We can, we can see the... Um, the degree of international participation in the Sierra Week Forum indicates that international companies are much more interested in coming to India and investing than they would have been two, three, four years ago. And that doesn't solve the, the immediate problem, which is a real problem, but it does lay a stronger foundation for the future. Hmm. And what's your sense really on the U.S. making statements on exemptions and waivers on perhaps Iran's sanction deal? Would you see India in that sense in a sweet spot, really? There's been uh, back and forth on waivers, no waivers. I think the U.S.-India relationship is a very important relationship. It's evolved and developed over the last several years, and there's need to be realistic about uh, India's position. Uh, where it comes out in waivers uh, in, in Washington and, and in discussions between New Delhi and Washington, we'll, we'll see over the next, you know, really several days. But uh, some sense, I think, that there will be waivers uh, in circumstances like India would be a positive for the market in terms of lessening the impact on, uh, of high prices. Mm. Dr. Yogin, uh, one question that almost everybody is asking and wants to know an answer about really is the crude oil prices going forward. What is your sense? Because international bankers, brokerages, oil merchants all have come out with all sorts of report, putting crude from 70 on one side to 90, even 100 on the higher side. I think that really demonstrates, uh, I think the wide range of estimates of prices over the next six months really demonstrates the uncertainty uh, that exists. I mean, you could see prices uh, in some circumstances continuing to go up depending upon how these sanctions apply, depending what happens elsewhere, depending with something that people don't think maybe much about what happens with Venezuela, whose production is declining uh, so, so rapidly. Uh, on the other hand, when we look at 2019, we do see more supply coming into the market. We see more supply coming from Russia. We see uh, the United States, these bottlenecks that are kind of uh, dampening down uh, production growth being uh, reduced. And so we see a picture in 2019 where the supply picture looks better. I think it's the next couple of months that are the really dicey and uncertain period and why you're getting these, uh, these very wide uh, price estimates. And of course, you also have to remember people forget price matters. So if price does go up, it's going to affect demand. And that's a factor that will readjust the market too. But right now, in terms of supply and demand, there's no shortage in the market. A lot of this, I think, really reflects nervousness and anticipation, uncertainty, and all the kind of political back and forth that's now occurring as we go towards that November 4th date when these sanctions are supposed to go into effect. Oh, well, absolutely. But Dr. Yergin, would you say that the uncertainty would end on November 4th? Because, uh, you know, the markets, as you mentioned, so many uh, fundamentals to keep an eye on. And then again, you have the OPEC and the Allies meeting in December yet again. Uh, are you assuming uh, the agreement cut uh, that they have uh, in sense of output? Would you see that going forward in 2019 as well? Would you see that happen? The next few months are going to be very eventful. A lot of things are happening at the same time. I think that when the OPEC, non-OPEC get together in December, uh, they'll be looking at the conditions in the market and they're going to be wanting in general to stabilize the market and keep uh, prices from shooting up. In addition to the, the uh, Saudi oil minister, we're going to have the secretary general of OPEC at, uh, at our conference in, in New Delhi. And, and I think they're watching very carefully what happens. And they, they, don't, they know that if prices go up, 
they pay a price for it on the other side when, uh, uh, in terms of what happens to the market. So I think the December meeting uh, of OPEC and then OPEC and non-OPEC is going to be uh, a meeting aimed at stabilization. Hmm. And you know the producer countries are saying what they are saying but the consumer countries including India also did talk about on how they might dip into commercial inventories and maybe stop buying crude from international markets for some time. There could be a pause but then do you actually see that happening with the kind of dependence that we have and with the kind of demand that we have? Do you see that solution even feasible really? For uh, India, it really has to make its voice heard in the global market. Uh, one of the uh, one of the characteristics or uh, reasons that uh, this our conference is taking place in New Delhi is because it's recognized that India is now very important to the global energy markets, and that uh, that it's we see very considerable investment going into the downstream of the Indian market from around the world indicating its importance and so India's voice is much more significant and important and it's going to be listened to and I know it's being uh, listened to uh, as I uh, participate in discussions around the world. Well, absolutely, and we, of course, will wait for more of that dialogue when the Sarah Week begins in the next week. But with that, let's go for a very short break, and we will come back and continue our dialogue with Dr. Yergin on what really can be the expectations around globe when it comes to the supply-demand dynamics for crude.